Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com. Today we're going to be working on the front brakes on our 2015 Polaris Razor 900S. So if yours sound like this, chances are you probably need to do something. So let me go grab a couple of tools, get this tire out of the way, and I'll show you how to get these installed. All right, guys, I'm only going to assign a skill level of one for this one, so it's going to be a pretty easy one to accomplish. All right, let's go over some of the tools that we're going to need to pull this off. On the socket side, you just need a 15 and a 19. Then you're going to need a 5 millimeter Allen, a T30 Torx, a couple of extensions, as always, a decent 3 8 ratchet, flat blade screwdriver, and then a C-clamp. You also might want to invest in a good breaker bar to get those lug nuts loose. And then I'm actually using two different uh, torque wrenches, a snap-on one to do the, uh, the smaller numbers, and then this Craftsman unit to hit the big torques. All right, as far as the parts, if you would reference our parts diagrams, that's going to give you an exploded view of how everything uh, comes apart, and more importantly, how it goes back together. So once you've got your parts and your tools together, we can hop over there and I can show you how to do it. All right, we've got the wheel out of the way, and uh, take a look at this. <laughs> this is what the pad is supposed to look like, and that's what we've got. It is all the way down to the back plate. So yeah, that's why we were hearing that god-awful noise. So these definitely need to be uh, checked out. No reason to measure them, because they are shot. All right, let's start off by getting this um, deflector plate out of the way. This is a T30. For these two bolts holding on this little uh, plate right here. And then we'll loosen up that pad adjustment pin. That we just need to back it out about two or three turns. And that's really as far as it needs to go. Now we can remove the two bolts that are actually holding on the caliper mount that joins it to the, the hub. And there's just a couple of 15 millimeters. Now Polaris actually wants you to replace these each time you take them off. But I'm going to deviate from their playbook because I don't think that's necessary. The only thing you really need to do is just put a little bit of Loctite on these when, you, uh, when you're when you reinstalling them. All right, let's open this up just a little bit so we can get it off of there. <laughs> Completely gone. All right, the best way to get these collapsed Hey, spider. <laughs> All right, the easiest way to push the uh, caliper pistons back in, just use a regular C-clamp. Not much to grab on there. Let's go dead center. Yeah, I think that's it. Now, we can just walk them out. Make sure this is pushed all the way back. When I say this, I'm talking about the bracket against the rubber because there's just enough of a gap to walk them out, but not much. So, yeah, I'd say these were worn out. What do y'all think? With that out, let's see if we can knock out some of that mud, because uh, it doesn't need to be there. All right, we've got it cleaned up relatively well. What I'm inspecting now are these two boots that are actually on these uh, carrier pins, because the uh, caliper itself moves back and forth on that. Now, if these get cut and there's a bunch of dirt and mud in there, it's going to cause it to bind and not you know, move smoothly. I'm probably going to hang up your brakes and wear them out. That's what I was afraid had happened here, but they actually feel like they're in good shape. I don't see any tears, so we can leave them alone. So we can move forward and just get the new pads on there. All right, now we're just going to do everything in reverse. Push it all the way down against the rubber right there, and then lay in your new pads. Now we can go ahead and uh, remount the carrier to the hub. Line that up. Voila. Put a little bit of thread locker on each one of these bolts. Of 
Go ahead and snug these down, and then we're going to torque them to 30 foot pounds. And I've already got it mounted back up, but if yours were worn as, as viciously as these were, it looks like I got lucky as I was looking at the condition of the uh, the rotor itself. It's actually still pretty smooth. I mean, it was just right at the point of failing, so it has, had not started to damage these. Had they uh, continued to run it, eventually it'd be metal on metal, and we'd be replacing our uh, rotor as well. But that didn't happen to this one, fortunately. So we, uh, just a set of pads is going to straighten it out. All right, now we need to adjust that pad set screw. And the way you do that is go all the way in until it bottoms out, then back it off half a turn. Boom, right there. Now we can go ahead and get this little deflector shield mounted back up. I guess it's supposed to be protecting the uh, the line coming down for the caliper. All right, next, let's get the tire mounted back up. Now I like using this tool for you, especially taking things apart and getting them at least semi put back together in this case. But believe me, that is not nearly enough torque. If you're using uh, aluminum rims like this one has, they need 120 foot pounds. So you want to make sure that you get yours torqued correctly. Now if you've got a, uh, a unit with steel rims, they only need 60, but this is aluminum, needs 120. All right guys, that pretty much wraps this one up. All I have to do now is do the exact same procedure over on the other side. Well listen, if you need any of the parts that we use, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Till next time, we just want to say thanks for watching.